This is our ninth installment now of Anglicans You Didn't Know You Knew. And as I mentioned uh, each time, these, these videos are created to introduce you to people that you may, may know by name or by some contribution they've made, they've made to, American, to American history and American uh, culture and way of life. Uh, in each case, and have been both uh, foundational to America and also uh, members of the Anglican Church. And this points to the important role that the Church uh, of England has played in America. And, and so people should be aware of that. So if you're an American, the Anglican Church, the Anglican faith is part of your cultural, historical, and religious heritage, and I encourage you to consider that uh, as an American. Today's Anglican is George Herbert, born in 1593, dies in 1633, so very short life. Uh, father, he's born in Montgomery, Wales, to his father Richard Herbert, who unfortunately dies when Richard is only about, um, when George is only about three years old. And his wife, George's mother, is, her name is Magdalene Newport, daughter of Sir Richard Newport. So uh, George is seven, uh, number seven of ten children. Um, he's, uh, he, uh, he's, uh, he enters Trinity College at Cambridge at age 15, so that, that speaks to his, um, his upbringing, definitely. Born into a very artistic family, a wealthy family, and a, and a very powerful British family. He, in fact, serves publicly in, in Parliament as, as, as a public orator there at the University of Cambridge. Uh, in his, but his mid-30s, he gives that lifestyle up and he decides that he would rather go into holy orders. And so he is ordained an Anglican priest in 1629. He um, spends the rest of his life, in fact, uh, as a priest, at the, as a rector of a small Anglican parish named St. Andrew's Church in Lower Bremerton. This is all uh, sort of in the southwest, uh, a little bit southwest of London. He marries Jane Danvers. The two of them do not ever have any children, uh, but, they, but they do... Uh, provide housing for three of three orphaned nieces at the time so very nice way to make up make up that lost uh, ground herbert would write uh, a sort of um poetry but he also wrote books he wrote um a book called the country parson and this is he what he believed this was was a um just kind of a guide and he said it was a mark to aim for aim at for for all pastors of churches so the country parson offers very much a practical advice to rural clergymen, uh, or, or I would say any clergyman I myself have gained from it um, greatly. Um, the book was published only after his death in 1652, though. So he was not around to see that, see that published. Poetry, regarding poetry, um, his, he has a, one poetry called Holy Communion, or The Holy Communion, and it begins this way. When you hear some of the, some of the poetry, this is really what he's kind of known for, or is his lyrical skills. Uh, he writes this in this, his poem called Holy Communion. Not in rich furniture or fine array, nor in a wedge of gold, thou who for me wast sold, to me dost now thyself convey. For so thou shouldest without me still have been living within me sin. But by the way of nourishment and strength, thou creepest into my breast, making thy way my rest, and thy small quantities my length, which spread their forces into every part, meeting sins, force, and art. And then he closes with these words. Thou hast restored to us this ease, by this thy heavenly blood, which I can go to when I please and leave the earth to their food. So beautiful, beautiful writing. He was a skilled musician as well. Uh, he plays the lute quite well, and he, so he sets a lot of his poems to music so he could play the play the. Play that to music. Uh, he wrote in Latin and Greek as well as in English, and he's known today for his for his lyrics. Really, uh, one of the one of the main uh, main uh, poems that he's written, which has been turned into many many hymns, uh, given put music to it, uh, is "King of Glory, King of Peace." Um, that one's very very popular. But he also "Teach Me My God and King." That's found in over. 230 hymnals, and Let All the World in Every Corner Sing, which is found in over 103 hymnals. More than 90 of his poems have been actually set to music for singing over the centuries. Herbert was never, never unfortunately, uh, lived long enough to see uh, what a magnificent impact he had in the musical world. Um, he was never very healthy. 
He dies in 1633 of consumption, which is kind of a lung, a lung disease, at age 39, very, very young age, like I mentioned before. So that's, and of course, that's only three years after his ordination as well. So he didn't live long even serving that parish. And though he lived only a very short time, his poems and his musical lyrics have really touched millions of, of lives and have been because they've been translated into, into a number of languages. And so like you have French, German, Spanish, among other languages. Among the 20th century composers who have set his works to music are men such as Benjamin Breton, uh, also William Walton, but maybe most, um, most notably you have English composer Rafe von Williams. And Rafe von Williams uh, sets, takes four of Herbert's poems and um, from his 16, 1633 collection called The Temple, and he creates what he calls the Five Mystical Songs. George Herbert is remembered and celebrated on the 27th of February on the, on the church calendar. And uh, so Herbert is, uh, what else can we say? Poet, uh, uh, primarily, musician, author, uh, priest, and, and pastor of his church. He's best known probably to us for his lyrics. So we are going to close with some lyrics from, from a poem that he wrote, a poem, a poem actually called Death. So it's kind of a good way to close, I think. Here's, here's how this poem goes. Death, thou wast once an uncouth, hideous thing, nothing but bones, the sad effect of sadder groans. Thy mouth was open, but thou couldst not sing. For we consider thee as at some six or ten years hence, after the loss of life and sense, flesh being turned to dust and bones to sticks. We looked on this side of thee, shooting short, where we did find the shells of fledged souls left behind, dry dust which sheds no tears but may exhort. But since our Savior's death did put some blood into thy face, thou art grown fair and full of grace, much in request, much sought for, as a good. For we do now behold thee gay and glad, as at doom's day, when souls shall wear their new array, and all thy bones with beauty shall be clad. Therefore we can go die as sleep and trust, half that we have unto an honest, faithful grave, making our pillows either down or dust. <laughs>